Hello and welcome to another edition of DPR, the Petroleum Industry Regulator. Now this week our focus is on the Health, Safety and Environment Division of the Department of Petroleum Resources. Now you realize that in life, safety is key. So for effective and productive workforce, there's need for them to be in good health, while the environment where the work is carried out must be conducive. Different kinds of hazards, if you know what we mean by all of that. But these three key factors are critical to operators in the oil and gas industry. So the Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR, the vision there was carved out you know, to ensure that all the health, safety and environmental rules and laws are complied with by operators within Nigeria oil and gas industry. What are these rules and regulations? How are they enforced? Well, you stay with us for answers to these questions, very pertinent questions. But first, our usual tidbits on Nigerian global oil and gas industry. And Sulaiman Aled, welcome to the program. Nigeria's Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Dr. Ibe Kachuku, in one of his working visits to the Department of Petroleum Resources, marveled at the high level of technology deployed by the department to monitor and protect Nigeria's crude oil export from the terminals to various buyers around the world. The minister could not resist requesting for the equipment to be deployed to the necessary offices, especially that of the president, the vice president, the National Assembly leadership, his office, and the Minister of Finance. Lots of good things are coming out of here. This is very exemplary. I can create the concepts, but having to take those to the execution stage, um, you know, is, is, a big, is a big work. When we talk about tracking, when we talk about being able to monitor the crew that we produce, uh, when we first said it looked like it was just up in the air. Now you've done it successfully. I mean, a few, a few points still need to be beefed into this. But uh, the thing is that it's working, and the uh, upper level management, the president, the vice president, everybody needs to see that it's working. Um, I'd like to see the governor see that it is working. Uh, because that's what gives confidence. There's a lot of mistrust for the oil industry. And some of these initiatives, uh, which have never been done before, uh, need to come out. So I congratulate uh, everybody in DPR for excellent work. The director of the Department of Petroleum Resources, Mr. Mudakai Ladan, in response, has said the department has already concluded arrangements to deploy the facilities as directed by the minister. He then took time to explain the functionality of the equipment. Nigeria is moving through the Department of Petroleum Resources to account for every molecule of uh, crude oil leaving this country and that that is to be utilized in country. The minister was also conducted around facilities of the department and some of its refurbished offices to bring the department to a very modern and up-to-date regulatory body. Nigeria's oil and gas industry profile has soared significantly with the sailing out of the largest floating production, storage and offloading vessel Egina from Lado Free Zone, Lagos on Sunday 29th August 2018 at exactly 5 p.m. Nigerian time. The $3.3 billion Egina FPSO, the first of its kind, to be locally fabricated and integrated in Nigeria and indeed Africa is designed to produce 200,000 barrels per day, that's approximately 10% of Nigeria's total oil production from OML 130, located about 150 km offshore Port Harcourt. Now, the offshore oil facility owned by Total PLC, which will commence production by the end of 2018, will operate in water depth of over 1,500 meters for a period of 25 years. Egina FPSO has since arrived its destination at OML 130. This is a special announcement from the Department of Petroleum Resources. Gas is safe. Gas cylinders are to be kept outside. If you're buying LPG cylinder, look for NIS number on the cylinder. Exchange of gas cylinders with retailers during purchase is best practice instead of refilling from another cylinder. Buy gas from certified LPG plant. Repairing faulty gas cylinders is unsafe. For more information, visit the nearest DPR office or our website www.dpr.gov.ng. You're welcome back. For the news, now you're informed. 
But now let's go back to what we started off. You know, the regulator in the oil and gas industry, the Department of Petroleum Resources, is a very big organization, yes. But for its optimum efficiency, the department is subdivided into different divisions. So within these divisions are the branches. Today we bring you the Health, Safety and Environment Division of DPR. What does this division do? We hand you over to our correspondent and when we come back, and I'm quite sure you'll be pretty much aware about HAC, that's another acronym for Health, Safety and Environment. HSE simply means Health, Safety and Environment. It can be represented by different acronyms like HSE, SHE, ESH or HES. However, all of them represent the same thing, health, safety and environment. HSE today is an essential and integral part of the way business is done all over the world and Nigeria is no exception. In the oil and gas industry, HSE has become even more sacrosanct. The Department of Petroleum Resources is the organization charged with the responsibility of ensuring that the industry rules and regulations are adhered to. The mandate of this division is to supervise and monitor the day-to-day -day activities and operations of the oil and gas industry. The division has the responsibility of ensuring a healthy workforce, their safety and a sustainable environment. All these must be in accordance with the department's set guidelines and relevant federal government's laws and policies. The Health, Safety and Environment Division of the Department of Petroleum Resources is saddled with the responsibility of enforcing national and international safety and environmental regulations, codes, guidelines and standards, all of which must be adhered to during the design, construction, installation, operation, maintenance and commissioning of all petroleum industry related projects. As part of its mandate, the Health, Safety and Environment Division is further subdivided into three major components. These are Environmental Control, Safety Control and Laboratory Services for Administrative Purposes. The Environmental Control Branch is saddled with a wide range of functions amongst which are Planning Organizing and promoting dynamic and viable programs on environmental matters throughout the Federation. The branch must show sustainability with regards to the oil and gas industry and management of environmental study process. This entails the evaluation of study needs of the oil and gas industry, facilitate, guide, monitor and approve studies for all petroleum industry projects from conception to commissioning. Another role of Environmental Protection Branch is the control of environmental management system and implementation. Through this, the branch enforces procurement of EMS and ancillary documentation reviews and audits say. It is also to provide general guidance at HSE Managers Forum. In addition to all the three roles of the Environmental Control Branch, it also controls all pollution management and all related petitions in the oil and gas industry. All these are to guide stakeholders in the industry, especially operating companies, on pollution prevention by ensuring documentation of responses and strategies. But the challenge here is the multiplicity of regulators in the industry which impacts negatively on the cost of production. Since after the creation of PAPER, which metamorphosed to Federal Ministry Environment and the other sister agencies, you find a kind of uh, multiplicity of uh, regulators and by implication also multiplicity of regulations. That is quite expensive to the operators 
and it's cumbersome to the industry, and it's also increased the cost of the, you know, oil production. This branch also handles compensation and restoration of sites where pollution occurs. It ensures that data on spills are provided and disputes are resolved. The environmental branch equally controls waste management in the oil and gas industry, provides emission standards and limits, reviews waste treatment and disposal technologies. It also monitors waste generation and tracks its disposal. So what do we do as DPR? One of the tools we use to check to see what the effect of the activities is on the environment is the environmental evaluation studies or reports, as the case may be. So what we do is, after like um, three years to five years, we come in here, we carry out the EES to see the effect of the activity on the environment. Meanwhile, don't forget, we have an EIA which is like more like a baseline. So we we'll compare what the situation was as at the inception and what it is due to their operations. operations. And we use that to check how their activities impact on the environment. The safety control branch has laid down objectives, amongst which are providing technical support to the core divisions of the department, as well as providing special services to the Department of Petroleum Resources. Safety branch also helps to achieve dynamic, safe, profitable, and a responsible Nigeria petroleum industry. The trainings for personnel going offshore are responsibilities of the companies. Companies, various companies are supposed to train their staff, but it is the duty of DPR to ensure that, yes, these people have, have competency for the jobs they are carrying out. Uh, MISDO is uh, the minimum industry safety training for downstream operations. Uh, this is a new project that uh, DPR is embarking open and it is uh, as a result of the uh, accidents we are having in downstream now. The safety control branch mandate includes enforcing regulations, ensuring long-term improvement of safety and health records, and ensuring that best practices are used in the industry to achieve operational excellence. There are different types of trainings. This is particularly this is helicopter underwater training called HUET. So they are in a training simulator, you know, taking their trainings how to go how to survive under emergency. That's what they are doing. And DPR we regulate them, we certify we accredit them every year, give them accreditation to practice it. So every year we come for annual accreditation to be sure that what they are doing is in line with industry best standards. Laboratory services is another branch of health, safety and environment division. It is responsible for ensuring quality control and assurance of petroleum products, certification of oil field chemicals and environmental compliance. This branch has three main sections, namely laboratory development and accreditation. Second is petroleum products monitoring and environmental compliance monitoring, while the third is oil field chemical certification and tracking. The laboratory services branch monitors the quality of petroleum products refined in the country or imported, screen, certify and approve all oil field chemicals prior to deployment. It also audits and accredits new third-party laboratories in line with set requirements as well as carry out periodic audit of existing third-party laboratories. We conduct annual audit. In fact, there are three, there are four audits spread throughout the year. First quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. Just to ensure that these laboratories that we have accredited do not fall in terms of service delivery, fall in quality. The results coming from this laboratory should be reliable because it's going to be used in the industry. It even determines quality of, of other things that will be produced. For the safety, we talked about aviation, 
So the results that come from these laboratories are very key. The other functions of the laboratory branch are monitoring the quality of effluents and emissions discharged by operators into the environment and providing support services to a few federal government agencies like the EFCC, the police, navy and civil defense in the conduct of their laboratory analysis. Well, welcome back. The Health, Safety and Environment Division of the Department of Petroleum Resources, you will agree with me, plays a, a very critical role in the functions of DPR as a regulator in the oil and gas industry. Now, having set that tone, let's now go over to the interview segment of the program where we get to meet the arrowhead of this division. And if I were you, I'll stay put because this is one segment that you just uh, might learn a thing or two, even how you go about safety at all. Welcome again to this segment of the program and today we are the Health, Environment and Safety Division of the DPL. And of course, we'll be talking to the deputy director in charge of this department, and she's also the head of health, safety, and environment division of the DPL. And we are meeting Mrs. Oye Buchi Sibudu. Madam, you are most welcome to this segment of the Thank program. you very much. Well, we want to start by asking you, when we talk of health, environment, and safety, what do we mean? In the oil and gas industry, both the upstream and the downstream, Every activity that go on in the industry have health, safety, and environment component to it. In short, that is the basis for every activity that we do. So for the upstream activities, safety is key. The environment is also necessary because we have to know that we produce sustainably and the environment will remain there even when the resources are gone. So for operations, we ensure that safety of the facilities, hazards identified during design stages of these facilities are designed out. When I mean designed out, when you have a project, for example, you carry out a study that we call HAZOP. The, the whole idea is for you to look at all the safety hazards associated with that facility and the operation you tend to carry out. Identify these hazards and design your facility in such a way that you mitigate those hazards. Environment is almost the same way because for environment, you have your pristine environment before your project starts. So when we talk of HSE, in Nigeria, in the oil and gas industry, how would you say we are faring compared to where similar operations are carried out, maybe in the developed world? We are on it, but we will not say that we are where we should be. And that is why the Department of Petroleum Resources is constantly hampering on issues concerning safety, environment, and health. Like we have this environmental conference that we hold every two years, the HSE conference, biennial conference. We, we hold it since, we've been holding it since 1979. The first one was held in Port Harcourt. The whole idea is for us to share experience on HSE issues, bring professionals both internationally and local to discuss on how we um, produce sustainably for the environment. And um, that, over the years, has helped the department to bring the information to the industry and to the people at large, the need for safety, health and environment in the industry. Okay, let's talk about this thorny issue in the oil and gas industry, the issue of uh, pollution, environmental degradation and things like that. How, in what way does uh, your department, your division and DPR as a whole uh, superintend over the operators in this industry and ensure that things like that don't really happen? For the companies to operate, environmental issues are in the front burner. So, of course, they are all registered companies and then 
they come to the DPR for their environmental, what we call permits, for the different activities that they carry on. And that starts with that same EIA document, which you have used to study the effect of your project, identify the impacts, and you have documented it so you have that document set. Then we issue what we call environmental permits. Even before the drilling activities start, you have to have these permits. Why do we do that? You've identified the sources of waste, effluents, both solid, liquid, and where they will be going. You have described how you intend to manage them to make sure that they don't constitute any nuisance to the environment before you can now go to the upstream department to get your drilling permit to start. Okay. When you have done that, we now monitor the drilling activities. Well, they, there's always a talk of being proactive. This is a new challenge, and of course, we cannot just sit down and let it be. What are you thinking of? What is DPR doing or thinking about of containing this kind of new or emerging, emerging challenge? We are engaging the communities. We are creating awareness. We want them to know that this is not the way to go and that such pollutions are going to stay there for long. They're difficult to clean. So we are creating problems for generations unborn. We are also discussing with the security agencies, the Navy, the, the JTF are on this. And they try, if, if you notice, they've been trying to get at them. And when they get them, they try to destroy the, um, their facilities, which is also another problem, which we have been telling them that this is not the way to go. Is it possible for you to educate the Chimi Nigerians who are watching this program now, especially for Kero, where the, like we say, most of the people who don't have the means use a lot. How, is there any simple way if they buy Kero that they can find out if this is good enough for us to start using at all? Well, there's a, not a very scientific way, but when you drop um, kerosene on the floor and put match, it's not supposed to flash or catch fire immediately because the flash point is not that uh, high. So, but if you put it and put match on it and you see flame, then that's a sign that it's not safe. It's mixed up with something with a higher, uh, a lower flash point. Would you say DPR is doing enough to sensitize people on these simple ways of find, ma ma ensuring that the products they get is safe before they use? Are people out there aware of this very simple method you have said? Yeah, well, just like this program is on now, our public affairs has really improved on the way we are trying to get this across to people. We now have radio jingles talking to people about what to avoid and what not to do, TV programs, and we in plan to improve on that and continue. Still talking about quality and let's talk about what happened in Lagos not too long ago, the tanker that uh, had an accident, exploded. And before, who ensures the, 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 the this, this articulated vehicles or these tankers that haul different petroleum products across the country are in good uh, they meet the required standard they are supposed to have because you see so many of them on the road and you really wonder who allowed this kind of truck to be conveying such very sensitive products. It's unfortunate what happened in Lagos recently. You know there are many stakeholders involved in the uh, petroleum product uh, handling and at different stages. But for the DPR at the depot, we have our staff who make sure that um, the, they ha these vehicles have, first of all, their, the drivers have their licenses and the, car, the ve vehicles have their roadworthiness certificates and registration. These are paper verifications because there are other bodies involved like the VIO, the state agencies in issuing out the um, roadworthiness certificate. We verify that they have these roadworthiness certificates before these tankers are allowed to load. The health aspect, what, how do, what do you do there? How, what does DPR do when it comes to that aspect of in the industry? Health. In DPR, the health aspect is almost embedded in the safety. But it has to do with the occupational health issues. They come, we, had, we just set up a unit for addressing the health issues. 
most of our conferences have been trying to address this, that the H in the she it is, is so silent. small, it's yeah, very yeah. silent. Okay. And we're beginning to try to make sure that we bring it out. Okay. Thank you so much, Mrs. Onyebuchi Zibedu, yes. the Deputy Director and Head Health, Safety and Environment Division of DPR. We want to thank you for your time and for shedding light on what you do in this department. It has been quite enlightening. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So, well, that's, the, uh, that's our segment for this program. We hope you join us next week when we bring another division of the DPL to explain again what they do and then, of course, for you to be better educated. Well, thank you, Antonia, for that insightful interview. Well, I hope your viewers have been better educated about another aspect of the Department of Control and Resources, Operations and Regulatory Functions. And with that, we've come to the end of today's edition of the program. Don't be sad. I'll be back again next week. And it will be another date for you ensure you keep a date and watch this program. See you there.